And if you have it, would you please say amen? Amen. Some of y'all still looking? Because that didn't sound strong at all. <laughs> if you have it, would you please say amen? Amen. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. Okay. So look at what it says. I'm reading from the New King James. There was a little city with few men in it. And a great king came against it, besieged it, and built great snares or built great traps around it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that same poor man. Then I said, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Well, it's quiet up here. <laughs> Say, what? Yeah. It says, in the city there was a poor wise man. <laughs> oh, I guess I didn't preach this here before. Okay, good. <laughs> I want you to find somebody then and look them out on the eyeball. Would you find just find that it's on the word for home? Just find somebody. Just find somebody to look at just for a second. Come on, look somebody out on the eyeball. Come on now. Let's find somebody. And here's what I want you to tell them. This is the thought for today's message. Life, Life is what you make it. Is what you make it. Mm -hmm. Life is what you make it. I believe that all of us can agree that the majority of us have had um, or have become victims of mental, historical, and even generational condition. Um, we don't even think about the fact that, and I even heard a young man say a little while ago, that we don't think about the fact that things that we have been fed and when I say fed, I'm not talking about meals, so to speak. I'm talking about thoughts. Things that we have been fed throughout our younger life, in actuality, became the framework for our thinking and even for our ideologies that we positioned in our mind as to how we were going to live life. And so much of what it is that we have heard from other people in actuality, put us in a place to where we became one-dimensional thinkers. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I'm talking to everybody so far. We became one-dimensional thinkers. Now, I know some of us have said, well, matter of God, please help me. What do you mean by being a one-dimensional thinker? In other words, what we were all taught is that all that you have to do is get yourself a good job and carve out for yourself a good living. And even though, man of God, we were told to make for ourselves a good living, we weren't told to make a good life. That's right. And so because of the fact that we were now just taught just to make a good living, that's what we aspired for. That's what we went after. We only looked for a good job. And in many instances, though, the good job was only paying minimum wage. Yes. But how in the world can you have maximum life and you're only making minimum wage? That's a good word. Yes. Y'all with me so far, right? Yes. So here we were, we were told then to just try to do the best we can by having this good living. And so the majority of us heaped into one basket, so to speak, and we continued to follow the same path that everyone else uh, would try. And we didn't really take to heart as to what it was that we were going to do that ultimately would separate us from the crowd. What is it that you were going to do that ultimately will catapult you into another dimension of thinking? Uh, to where you get to the point to where you knew that there had to be something more than where I am right now. And, 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 and also, beyond just living a good life, what many of us did is that we thought that by having a certain lifestyle, that that equated to a good life. Well, I'm on. Yeah, am I doing okay so far? Yes. Okay, okay. So, so, so what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is this. So many people have been taught that if I drive the right kind of car, Come on. 
So if I have a name brand car, because we were taught to have a name brand lifestyle. Uh -huh. So if I have a name brand car, if I drive the Lexus, if I drive, you know, Range Rover, if I drive BMW, if I drive uh, Mercedes, I am considered to have a good life. If I shop at all the right stores, then I am considered to be able to have a good life. Uh, and, and, and then if I wear all the name brands on my body, I'm considered to have a good life. People will esteem me because of the fact that I have all this stuff that people say, or the world says, that this is the life I should be living and aspiring for. And then what we don't really understand also is that we, being victims, are not probably victims of a system that is not designed to try to help you get ahead any whatsoever. Stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. I promise you I'm going somewhere, okay? And so we're part of the system. And so we have to understand, y'all, is that within the confines of the system, um, it is not the Lord's system, it is the devil's system. It's controlled by him. This is still the Lord's world, undoubtedly, but nonetheless, the system that we live within absolutely belongs to Satan. Have I with me so far? Okay. All right, so, so, then, so, so then when some of those thoughts in your mind, the scriptures that we have before us today, it says that there was a little city with few men in it. Now, according to Jewish antiquity, according to Jewish culture, in order for it to be considered up to be a city, there had to be at least 10 men in the city. The only way that a Jew would ever consider a place to be a city, that it had to be at least 10 men. So there's only 10 men, or a little more maybe, in this particular city. But it says now that this great king came against this city. Okay, so now the question has to be, if this is a little small city, what is it that is so valuable and worth and noteworthy about this little city that will cause this great king to want to have that as a possession? And so now the question becomes that for you and I. So here it is that you are a part of the system, you're part of the system that I was speaking about a moment ago. And so what is it about you that presents value to that system that causes them to want to have you in their system? And if in fact then they see you as valuable, the question here, you already did the my way. The question that becomes, uh, what value have you ascribed to yourself? Do you see yourself as having any level of worth? Where is your esteem about yourself? Who do you see when you look in the mirror every day? Wow, well, see, it's quiet in here. Lord, you said this is what it's going to be. And, and, and so, so the problem is then, is that too many of us do not ascribe any real level of value to ourselves, and that's the reason why that even when you go into their system, you won't even ask for what you're worth. You won't ask for what you're worth because you're always taking what they give you. Whatever value they assign to you, whatever worth they assign to you, is what you now allow yourself to ascribe to, and therefore your whole thought of aspiration or evolving or progression is crushed because you're not thinking that way because they won't let you think. That's the truth. They don't want you to think. All they want you to do, want you to do is act. All they want you to do is come into their system and follow the guidelines of their system. And as long as you follow the guidelines of their system, they will then pay you in accordance to you having followed the rules. Again, again, watch this. They see your value. Uh -huh. Come on. Oh, come on now. 
they see your value, and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. They see your value, but the reality is they only want to see your value as it relates to how you're going to help them become what they want instead of you becoming what you want. So there's this little city, a few men in it, great king comes against it, and it says that he besieged the city and set traps around it. That means he surrounded the city, and then what they did is that they dug trenches all around the city, so there's no way in, and there's no way out. So they are confined, they are contained. And that's the kind of thinking that the enemy wants you to possess. A thinking that you are contained and to keep you confined. He does not ever want you to think about the fact that you can break out of where you are right now. And so therefore, many of us, even though you're in the kingdom of God, you still think in a limited fashion. You can come here to this house week in and week out, and the word of the Lord is going forward, and you jump, shout, holler, scream, fall out, run around the building to it, but even after all of that is done, you go back to the same system that has you contained. You're not looking for a breakout. You're not even looking for a breakthrough. All you're looking for is to come back here so you can get your next fix. See, understand something, y'all. I'm going to make a bombshell statement right here. Understand something. Listen, you don't have to be great to get started. But you do have to get started to be great. And the problem, Pastor Dave, that I found with too many of us is that we're always on the drawing board. We don't ever get started. We keep on saying, as soon as. As soon as, as soon as, as soon as I move somewhere, as soon as I move, as soon as me and uh, my family make some more money, uh, as, as, as soon as I get my degree, uh, as soon as I am able to move down to Georgia, as soon as, as soon as, as soon as, and who says that you're going to have any of the time that you are assigning to yourself? It is appointed unto men once to die. And then after that comes um, what? Judgment. So now, child of God, who says that you can have all this time for you? Only God knows how much time you've been assigned. And yet you keep on putting things off and keep on putting things off and keep on putting things off. And that's the reason why you find yourself in the dilemma that you find yourself in right now. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But I can see y'all thinking, is that what it is? Yes, okay, okay. And so, so here it is that, the, that, that this king has this city totally, you know, uh, contained. They're totally confined. Can't nobody get out, can't nobody get to them to be able to take them any sort of uh, help or, or support. Can't nobody get to them. And, and so now, children of God, why is it also that some of us keep ourselves away from the help that you could get? There are some of us that when help is offered to you, you don't look at it as being something that can actually help you. Watch this, because you don't really want to pay the price necessary to get what it is that's being offered. And then also, then also what happens is that many of us don't know how to form proper relationships. That's right. Because what's this here? Why in the world do you keep on connecting yourself to people who don't have nothing? Yeah. <laughs> Am I still doing okay? Yes, I don't want to so okay. Yeah. Because, because there's too many of us that, that, that you have people in your life, and not that they're bad people, Tony, they're loving people, they're kind individuals, but the reality is they can't help you improve right. your situation. Right. They are
people who can come into your life, who can speak a life yes. to you. Yes. You don't need nobody coming alongside you and all they want to do is lament and sorrow and grieve over how bad it is. I got no money again this week. Oh, don't come out with this. Talk to you, okay? Well, I need to talk to somebody who has got the authority and power. Somebody who's going to encourage me. Somebody who's going to ignite my spirit. I need somebody in my life who's going to be like a Mary. And when Mary walked in the room, and he was John in Elizabeth's belly, and as soon as Mary walked in the room, John leaped. You need somebody in your life who's going to make your baby leap. And you also need somebody in your life who sees your value. I'm getting ahead of myself. But, but, but somebody who sees your value yeah. and will not allow you to sit on your world yeah. and not do what it is that's inside of you and then will begin to call out of you what's in you. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so the king. The king, the king of Angels, he got the whole city surrounded. But then it says that in the city, there was a poor, wise man. How in the world can them two words go together? How can you be poor and wise? Wise means that you not only have knowledge, but to be wise means that you've learned, learned how to properly apply the knowledge. And so how is it then that he has come to this place in his life? How in the world would he allow himself to sink so low into the dregs of society and not allow himself to pull himself up with what he already knows and possesses? Because here's the question, here's some questions that David had to ask these questions to myself. Uh, first of all, my question was, uh, when was it that he made the decision to tap out on a life? When was it, you, that he made the decision that he no longer wanted to be a contributor? He wanted to be a contributor to society anymore. What's this for? When was it that he made the decision that he was not just going to be mediocre and average? What's this? When was it that he made the decision that he wanted to be poor? Because you don't just get to be poor That's right. just by being. That's right. Because at least you're, if you're a being, you won't be poor. Yeah. At least you'll have something. Yeah. That's right. But he's poor. So now this guy has made up in his mind that he is not going to be a part of society anymore. That's right. Mm. And so then the people of the city, though, they see what he possesses. Come on. Because they say that he was, the city was delivered by this poor, wise man. So watch this. What's wrong with us then when everybody else around us can see what you have and you can't see it yourself? My God. How is it that everybody else can see these great gifts and talents and skills and abilities that lie? the inside of you, but yet you can't find it within you to be able to summon uh, from within your being all of what it is that you possess and begin to make it work for you. Uh -huh. What's wrong with us when you can always make what you have work for somebody else, but you can't make it work for you? Uh -huh. I'm what I'm saying. And so why is it also that you want to see somebody else's dream and somebody else's vision become grand and great, but at the same time, you have no vision for yourself? So what's this here? So what's this? So now, the only reason I see also, what's this baby? The only reason why I see that he accepted the charge was because it was also about self-preservation. to know that he wants to live as well. So I have to do something 
to make sure that all of us stay alive. And so here it is that right now you're fighting so hard for everybody else and knowing that of course that your self-preservation is connected to it but then the question is what happens after you have preserved yourself? Yes. Yes. And then what's this, what's this princess? And then the question also is preserve myself for what? what? Right. Oh. Come on. Come on. Because, because look at somebody right now look at ask the question say, say what's next? What's next? Uh-huh. What's next? What's next? What's next? Because that's the problem with most people. You don't ask, you can't answer that question. You have no clue as to what's next. And the reason why you have no idea as to what's next is because you didn't even start yet. You love coming to church. Church, 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 is church. Church, church, church. But every time you go back, you leave church and you still That's right. Oh. See, cause I'm not gonna talk See, cause I'm not gonna talk about I'm not gonna talk about being broke. I don't even want to use that word anymore. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to use that word anymore. Here, here, here's the phrase I use now. Instead of talking about being broke, I say that right now I'm overcoming a cash flow challenge. Yes. Overcoming yes. a cash flow challenge. Yes. Yes. See, see, because remember, you have. Oh, put another word here. You have what? You have what you say. And if you keep on speaking that broke spirit over yourself, yes. guess what you're gonna have? You're gonna be a broke somebody all the rest of your life because that's what you keep on saying. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. So he delivered, he called, he delivered the city, but then after he delivered the city, the next following verse says, yet nobody remembered that poor wise man. Now let me tell you something. It wasn't the fact that they didn't rejoice over the fact that he had delivered them. What they thought about though was that he's still poor. So he came out of obscurity, had his 15 minutes in the sun, and then after that he went right back to obscurity. And watch this, it's the same with you. Here it is that you're on that job, and watch this, and you're going to the job, and first of all, you know that you don't like going there. Because statistically, in America, in America, what's the statistic is that 85% of Americans hate their job. You watch this. You watch this statistic. Also, statistically, 75% of all heart attacks happen between 8 and 9 a.m. every day. So I said, so what does that mean? So what's that question from? You know what that means? It means that people are dying to go to work. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're dying to go to work. And what's this here? And you keep on going to that place week in and week out, year in, year out, and you keep on going there, and the more that you go there, the more swiftly your own dream dies. Yeah. There are too many of us that don't even think you can have a dream. Because you've been historically conditioned. Yes. You've been genera generationally trained that this is the way that we do it. So why try to break out from what the rest of the family has always done? Why in the world would I dare put myself in a position to where folks is going to look down on me? Why in the world, what's this, would I even think about trying to separate myself from the back? Wow. Are y'all hitting me in the head? And so, so therefore, now, child of God, so my question is then, why do you allow yourself to continue to be a follower yes. when God made you a leader? Amen. And the lifestyle, what's this, the lifestyle that you're supposed to live is supposed to be a lifestyle of dominion. Yeah. 
Yes. 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 Come on now. Yes. We're supposed to be in charge down here. Yes. But watch this. But why in the world then would this man come out of hiding? And then once he comes out of hiding, do what it is that is necessary for he and the few folks that are in that city, and then he allows himself to go back into hiding. Mercy. Now watch this here. Watch this. It says, yet no one remembered that poor wise man. He delivers them, and they don't give him a dime. Mm. Oh, come on. Bye, bye, bye. Wow. Are y'all hearing me? They don't give him a dime. They don't even thank him. They just kick him right back to the curb. And think about this. How many of you on the places where you go, is your place of employment, that right now you go there and you give them all your ideas? That is so true. They use your gifts yes. each and every day. Yes. Making millions of yes. dollars off of you every day, every week, every month, every year. And watch this. And then once you leave there, all they're going to do is give you a luncheon with some finger sandwiches, give you a certificate, and a $25 gift card to shop right. years of your life because watch this Emmanuel watch this because for many of us know what has happened you actually died when you were 25 or 30 years old they just buried you when you were 65 years old wow. Wow. 25 years old dead you're dead because why? You're dead from the yes. end down. You're dead because you don't even bother to think about how you can ultimately uh, and, uh, creative inventions. Yes. Creative inventions. Yes. I, I heard y'all say it. Yes. But you know what happened? You know what happened? You know what happened? Best day, not that you created for that. But what happens, y'all, is that all that becomes for some people is nothing more than a ritual we do every Sunday morning. Yes. And it comes a ritual because that's all we do. We just go quote it and we quote it and we quote it and we quote it and we quote it and, we quote it, and nothing ever comes out of it. Come on. Because all I'm going to do is just quote it. I have no intention of doing it. Come on. Boy, look, I better get back up in this time. Am I making sense to you? Yes. So look, so look. So, so then it says, Wisdom is better what? Than strength. Yeah. Wisdom is better than strength. Yeah. Nevertheless, though, the poor man's wisdom is what? Despised. And his words are not heard. Ain't nobody listening to him. Because the system that we are engulfed by, the system that we are consumed by, only respects those who make money. Come on. That's right. That's right. And without a doubt, make this. Without a doubt, be a missionary. Yes. Well, guess what? Even to do just those two things requires money. money. Yes. And the issue with most of us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ is that you come to the point to where we are cheap to ourselves. Amen. Come on, God. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. We ain't trying to make no real money. We don't want to make no real money. No, 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 no. no. Why? Because we have, if, well, most people live in one or two lands. Either you live in the land of not enough, yes. or you live in a land of just enough. And the majority of us, because you live in the land of just enough, you become so comfortable in that place that you're not striving to try to get to the place of more than enough. Oh, but Pastor Dave, Pastor Byrne, and other preachers that come up in here, they're quoted now on the hill. Who is able to do? I hear you. 
exceeding abundantly of all I could ever what? Ask or think. Wait, 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 wait. According what? To the power of what? What's in me? So that life is what you make. But what we've done is that we, we tapped out, just like this four wild pastor. We tapped out. We tapped out when we reached the place of just enough. As soon as I got to just enough, I'm good now. I made 50000 a year, I'm good now. Why'd you tap out that soon? Suppose the Lord wants to take you to 150000 Suppose he wants to take you to 250000 Are you ready to go? Or are you going to do just like what most of us believers do? Take all the great and grand ideas that the Lord gave you and put it on the shelf somewhere. And just let it sit there. In fact, some of y'all right now sitting here looking at me, you got stuff that you wrote down years ago. Sit in a drawer somewhere gathering dust and you ain't even trying to get it. And please understand, please understand that your children and your grandchildren are depending on you. Hear what I say? Yes, I said they're depending on you. Yes. Now I know some of us you know got to the point to where, hey, all I want to do is that I just go, you know, grow old and I get old enough and then, hey, my children gonna take care of me. That's not what the Bible says. Oh. Come on. Come on. The Bible says we're supposed to be in a place where we can take care of them. The word says we're supposed to leave an inheritance. Yes. To our Huh? And it's unfortunate that there are some of us even sitting in this room right now that you know that God forbid if you die today, they're going to have to take up a collection and get you in the ground. Am I still doing okay? And, when, and, so, and so, so, child of God, please hear me. Life is what God you knows. Yes. Stop trying to put the onus just on God. That's right. Because this is really all about your efforts. Yes. It's about what you do to pull yourself up. Yes. Okay? Because this man is obvious. This man quit. He quit on life. He quit on life. And let me tell you something. You can't dress yourself up enough and you can't put on enough perfume or cologne or wear enough fine jewelry or, or, or Gucci bags or whatever else. You can't put enough of that stuff on you to symbolize the fact that you have made it. You ain't made it yet. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you a question. Just a minute. Watch this. Let me ask you a question. I'm thinking from this perspective. So, those of us who are still challenged financially, okay, you're still challenged. And you said that, I'm all right. Okay, let me ask you this question then. Could you right now quit the cushy job you're on at the moment and be able to live for the next four months without having to work again and have the same lifestyle that you are living right now without ever having to go back to work? If you cannot do that, I'm going to that word now this time. You are broke. Yes. And the reason why you're broke is because you've made no plans. That's right. Yes. You're not thinking about trying to get yourself into a better economic situation. Yes. That's right. All that you're going to do is just be called on only when they need you to come to the rescue. And then after you come to the rescue, see it. I'm done with you. And there are some of you in here right now, you're counting on that job you've been going to, and you're counting on that job, God forbid, suppose the job when you got there tomorrow, and they said, we're no longer in business. What you gonna do? And the reason why some of us can't answer that question is because you have made absolutely no plan, any whatsoever, as to what your life will look like five years from now. Yeah. 10 years from now. 15 years from now. What will your life look like? Yes. And we don't even think about that. All we do, watch this. Let me say this. Many of us, what you do, 
All you do is exist, you don't live. Oh, oh that's good. That's good. That's good. We don't live. We don't live any whatsoever. Because of the fact that most of us, you know that right now, you say it out your mouth, I can't afford to do this. Or I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to do the other. And you keep on making those statements. Why? Because you base your entire life not on where you believe you're going, but you make your entire life based upon how many dollars you don't have. But the bottom line of the children of God is that life is what you make it. Yes. God says, I'm giving it to you. Yes. And what's this here? For some of us that you get kicked off your job. Don't look at that at the end of the day. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. For somebody in here, if the Lord allowed you to get kicked off that job, uh -huh. could it be that he realizes that you would never run to what he has for you yes. if you did not have to do it again. To get you to a place where you start thinking for yourself. Yes. 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 Why are you always thinking about trying to do something for these other corporations? Yes. When you go form your own. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I am so blessed by one of the commercials that I see on TV uh, and, and it's about a law firm. And, uh, and they got this young, young African-American yes. boy, more about 14, 15 years That's old. Right. And, and he says, yeah, one day I'm going to own my That's own law said. firm. Yes. I want to jump to the TV and say it, boy, say it. Yes. 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 What keeps you, child of God, from wanting to have your own? Yes. What is it? And what's this here? And stop living your life just to become 65. Oh, yes. Stop living your life and the only thing that you have to look forward to is a social security check. Or your pension. Because I've, heard, I've talked to so many men in particular because I go from place to place and I talk to some men and they'll tell me, say, uh, yeah, Pastor, I'll help you sir, your man, but right now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about five years from my pitch. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I, I need to stay here to, to the... So, suppose you don't live this scene. Is that right? That's right. That's right. What are you going to do with all of this great potential that God has placed within your being to bring you to a place to where you ultimately can get out of where you are. And let me say this to you too, because this is the room. There are some of you that the Spirit of God has so clearly spoken to you and told you that you need to get out of where you are geographically. Saying it is, so. yeah. the Spirit of God has said it's time for you to move geographically, yeah. but you're scared to leave your family. Yeah. I'm scared to leave my friends. I can't leave them. I gotta stay here. But do you understand that just because of the fact that you're born in a certain place does not mean that's where your destiny lies? Yeah. That's good. Joseph, Joseph could not stay in Canaan. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He could not stay in Canaan. He had to go to Egypt. Egypt was his destiny. And watch this. It wasn't until he got into Egypt that all of his gifts became unlocked. All of, his gifts, all of his gifts became unlocked when he got to Egypt. What's his? Joseph 
had ever been trained in how to run politics and run government. He was a sheep herder. That's right. But he gets to Egypt and all of a sudden he can run a whole nation. <laughs> Some of y'all right now, do you understand that the only reason why you're not flourishing is because you're not planting in the right soil? Uh, there are certain, there are certain plants, there are certain trees, certain flowers, that the only way that they will prosper is if they have to be in certain ground. And you must be perseverant. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Because this is good. For instance, this is good because the, the Chinese bamboo tree. There's a Chinese bamboo tree. And with the Chinese bamboo tree, it takes it takes five years for it to grow. But watch this. Watch this. For five years, you have to go to the place where you planted the seed and you have to water it, Tony, and you have to also fertilize it every day. But watch this. For three and a half, four years, you ain't gonna see nothing. But you still have to be persistent and perseverant yes, and go in there and watering and fertilizing the ground every day. And then in the fifth year is when it begins to bore its way through the ground. Yes, and within five weeks, yes. it becomes a tree of 90 feet tall. until it grew. Yeah. That's why you can't give up on your dream. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you dare allow anybody to tell you that you can't be who you see to be. Yeah. Because really, we think the Lord wants to use you as to be the one that ultimately is going to break out of your family and you're going to be the one to show the rest of your family. If I'm gonna die, 
let me die trying. Yeah. Yes, you. Yes. 
multi-million dollar ideas.